So in this video, what I want to look at is the formatting of different data types when you're using Deneb and Vega Light. Now, in some instances, this is really straightforward. If you look at the top visualization on the screen here, you can see we have two different data types, and then we'll look at that in a second as, as to how that's done. The second visualization on the bottom, this is our like table matrix, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is more complex, and we'll get to that after we look at the first example, which is this bar and line chart. So I'm gonna go into it, and I'll go to my edit mode as we do, and um, yeah, this is what we have. So we have percentages, and we have like whole values. We'll just focus in on the text marks, and as you can see here, on the text mark, we have to find that it's a text mark, and then in the encoding, in the text, we said the format is 0.2. Um, so if I just remove that, this format 0.2%, you can see that these values change to these really long numbers, these really long decimal numbers. And by putting this back in, we're saying format 0.2%. We make this change and you can see that what's happening is it shows that value as a percentage with two decimal places. If I were to say, give me to one decimal place, then you'll see I get one decimal place, but I'm switching it back to two. That's how I want to see it. Similarly, if you look at the bar, we have this text, and here I've specified right there, format is comma point zero F, which means shows me the, 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 the thousand separators, and I want it to zero decimal places. Again, if I just remove this, you'll see a, a smaller change in this case. You'll see that now, I make the change in this here, for example, the thousand separated disappeared. I'm gonna put that back in and you'll see the thousand separated coming back again. If I were to say two decimal places, you'd get the decimal values, but we don't want those, we don't need them. This is why we say zero F. So this is a pretty straightforward thing. And um, the only thing that you have to consider is stuff like the, the different axes. So in this one, we're not using the joint axes, we're using two axes, um, and that is using this resolve scale. Again, something that I mentioned on the in my previous videos, but if we just look at that, if we take this resolve scale away, you'll now see that the values are all across the bottom. Why? Because we're using one axis. If just outside where our layers end, our layers go from here all the way down to here, if just outside that, we write this resolve in the scale, which basically says resolve scale the y axis. So on the y axis, the scale, the y axis needs to be independent, which will automatically give us two different axes. So as I say, that's a really straightforward way of doing that because we just have different marks and um, we can quite easily separate those things out. However, it gets more complex in this situation because we have lots of different data types and they've been put together in a fold. A fold is something else that we looked at in previous videos, um, but now in this fold, we have this issue because a fold really actually, and I think it even says in the documentation, that a fold is a good way of showing data of a similar values, of similar data types. Two ways of doing this. The first way will work, but not necessarily very well when you have this combination of data, because we have here two exactly the two columns where we want to see decimal places. We have two columns where we don't want to see decimal places. We have one column that we want to see as a percentage, and we have another column where we want to see million, thousand separators, and also no decimal places. Interesting combination, and I've chose these fields intentionally to make it more awkward. So the first way of showing it actually won't actually solve the problem, but it'll get us a little bit of the way there. But I want to show it because it can be a very useful way of working if you have perhaps fewer columns or less of a mix of columns. So what am I going to do? So this is my fold and I'm saying fold all these and return this as metrics and number. So the name 
of all these metrics together now is just called metrics and the value is called number. So that's what I've done. What I now want to do is do another transform within this transform area here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off and it's going to be a calculate. So I'm going to paste something in and then we'll go through it. So what I've just pasted in, what I'm saying is if the number, so if datum dot number, so this is number here is number here. If this number, which is the values in all of here, if the number is less than or equal to one. I want the format of datum dot number to be 0.1%. So a percent shown to one decimal place. And I've renamed datum dot number, I've renamed number to text val. Okay. So what that means is I'm going to replace here where it says encoding text field, I'm going to replace it from number. And I'm going to change it here to text val because that's what I've just created. So that has worked because now everything that was less than or equal to one has changed to 0.1 decimal place. So just to highlight that, if I were to say 0.2 decimal places, all these values would now be two decimal places because I know that in this data set, everything that is in the return percentage can never be higher than one ever. There are some cases, of course, where the percentage can be higher than one, can be higher than 100%. If you're looking at growth, for example, is a um, great example of that. But in this data set, I know that rule will always work for this column. Cool. So I can now create a couple of more rules. Again, this is not going to solve the problem completely. And I want to show you the weaknesses of doing it this way as well. So now to, add, to make more rules, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it there. And I'm going to make a couple of changes. Now I'm going to say, if the number is greater than one, so here I've got less than or equal to one. Now I've got greater than one. If the number is greater than one, then what I want to see is 1000 separator to two decimal places. And I also need to change this part here to text val to match what I created here. So now I'm adding this new rule to the rule that already exists here. So create a text val and I'm adding this rule to my text val. So now when I make this change, you'll do see a change here. Now, it does look a lot better, of course, because you can see in my first two columns, I have my two decimal places, exactly what I want. On the column on my far, far right, the selected base, I have my million and my thousand separator, but I also have these two decimal places, which are completely unnecessary, which is true also of the two columns in the middle, this played in points, also don't need two decimal places. Now that's harder to make those rules, because if you look at the points, those values are very different, quite variable. Anything from, what is it, 67 up until 108, and they mix across the average minutes. So that's going to be much harder to calculate. And in fact, I'm not going to be able to fix this using this, this method I'm currently using. I'm going to do one more transformation just to show you how you can keep doing it. And um, this time I'm going to say datum dot number is greater than um, or greater than or equal to let's say uh, 100, then I just want zero decimal places. And when I make that change, you'll now see, great. And what you'll see here, I've got rid of everything that is my um, my two decimal places. Now I have my thousands and millions. Also here to change something as well. Why? Because as I said, I've just done it on a value. These of course are much higher. So I could say, you know, anything above, you know, 
1000, for example, might make more sense. Um, but again, as you can see, I'm hitting restrictions, I'm hitting things where it becomes harder to make those and those calculations because whereas this column was very easy, um, when you have the values starting to mix over, of course, you know, PPG and played, these values are very, very close together. I can't really do it that way. So if you have a data set where the values are very, very far apart and you know that all is going to stay within certain boundaries, you could certainly do it this way. No problem. Great. Unfortunately, for, for this combination of data, we have to do it in a different way. And I do prefer this way anyway, because it's a lot more precise, because what we're going to do is we're going to do it by the name of the metric, which is, of course, infinitely more precise. So I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff here, hopefully not too much. And I'll also change this from text file back to number because I've deleted that con that new um, transformation. And I'm going to put that back to number. So when I do that, you'll see I get back to my beautiful mess that we're going to now fix. How are we going to fix it, though? Well, to fix it, we are going to do a transformation like we've done here, but the transformation, the transform is going to be done within the individual layers. So here currently we only have, and it's going to maybe look a little bit more long winded, but it's actually for me much easier to do than what we just did with this, you know, changing based on number value. Lots of copy and pasting. The beauty of copy and pasting, it's nice and fast. Cool. So what we're going to do. In my mark, I am going to add, before we have the encoding, I'm going to add a transform. What I want to say is that if it's not, or if it is a name of a metric. So let's have a look. Let's see what I'm talking about here. So what we're saying here is this. The transform allows us to use the filter. So transform, filter. Filter this entire mark only show if it equals return percent. Yeah, so I'll just apply that change straight away and we can see what that change is. And that change is now this mark is only showing the data for return percentage. What that allows us therefore to do is to say in this mark, I want the format to be, as we did before, let's again go with the same thing, two decimal places as a percentage. And now we have that percentage. So that's great. So we know that the concept works and we know now we can do, as we did before, specify and say 0.2 percentage. So now because we know what we can do, and we know what we want to have in each of our columns, we can do it in a really clean way. So now I can just copy and paste this mark and do the entire thing again, and just make a couple of quick changes. Now, instead of saying equals return percentage, I'm going to say it equals average minutes or if Again, just do some copy and paste to be nice and lazy. Or if it equals PPG, then not 0.2 decimal uh, percentage, sorry, 0.2 decimal places, like that. So now, because we know how to do it, we can just copy and paste and select for each one. So yes, we do have to create a few more marks, like a couple of layers, but it's a really clean way. And also there's some other advantages we'll, we'll get to at the end there. So again, copy and paste and copy and paste. And, and now I'm gonna do the plate and the points, and I'm gonna do the same thing, paste that down. And now I'm gonna say, if it's average minutes, nope. If it's played or not PPG, but this time points, then I want thousand separator, because we do know the value is going to be higher, and zero decimal places, like that. Fantastic. The final one, 
one more time. We don't need the or in this case, we're just dealing with one column. Now I'm gonna say if it equals, just get rid of all of this and say if it equals selected base, then I want thousand separator and zero decimal places. Beautiful. Now, that worked, and I'm happy. Once you know how to do it, it's extraordinarily fast just to do the filter, filter, filter. Copy and paste, change a couple of values, you have it exactly how you want it. What I do like about it as well, also, you can kind of change how each column looks or the groups of columns or whatever you want in that situation. Because now, for example, going back to the first one that I created was return percentage, I could if I wanted to say, okay, it's percentage, if it's percentage, I want to change the text to, to red, or I can do other transformations that I want just for this particular um, column of data, just for the return percentage. Um, okay, red is a probably bad example, um, but you get my point. Now we can do more with the data in each particular column. So now, for example, if you had a need to do something, if you, if you wanted to say that the um, the weight of the font, for example, was um, bold, if you just want to go to uh, font, hope this works, just kind of guess and hear a little bit from um, bold. Uh, maybe it doesn't go in there, rather it goes here. Perfect example. Exactly. So if I wanted the return percentage to be bold, for example, if that was actually a more important value in all these values, you could say, okay, I want my return percentage to be bold. That's how I've done it. Why? Because I had the filter on each one, which was a perfect help for, you know, setting up all the, the formatting, but also can help us with other things. And actually in this data set, the return percentage is the most important one. So it's an interesting thing to maybe be able to change that and um, change the size of the, uh, the size of the font, all these little bits and pieces. So I hope that helped. Lots of uses. And it's one of those things where you think, oh, it has the use for, you know, the data formatting, but you can do lots of other things with it. This font uh, weight being the um, a great example, in my opinion. I hope you found this useful. I hope it comes in helpful for you. Um, if you liked it, as ever, please like, subscribe, some feedback, let me know if it's going to be helpful. Let me know if you have a better way of doing it. Always great to learn from you as well. And yeah, enjoy Power BI. Enjoy Deneb. Take care. Goodbye.